Hey everyone, today I am discussing Hiroshi Yoshimura's album, Music for Nine Postcards. And this is from the Wave Notation series, originally released in 1982 and reissued in 2017 by Empire of Signs. And I found this on the Light in the Attic Records website. The album has nine tracks and uses Rhodes piano and synthesizer as well as vocals on one track, but they are very quiet in the mix and they're used more like an instrument. From the Light in the Attic website, describing Hiroshi's work, they state his sound works took on many forms, commission scores, soundscapes for prefab houses, train station sound design, which is something that you will find in Tokyo and in Japan, which I think is really interesting. All existing not as side work, but as logical extensions of his philosophy of sound. His work strived for serenity as an ideal, and this approach can be felt strongly on music for nine postcards. So this album was home recorded on a minimal setup of keyboard and Fender Rhodes. Music for Nine Postcards was Yoshimura's first concrete collection of music given to the Hara Museum of Contemporary Art to be played within the building's architecture. And I've spoke about this before. This is the first Japanese ambient album I purchased even before I found the compilation Kankyo Ngaku from Light in the Attic, which I have here the Japanese ambient environmental and new age music from 1980 to 1990. And a lot of it focuses on minimalism, playfulness, mainly major key upbeat pieces that work um, in the background or as installation pieces. And even though Hiroshi is composing alone, there is a duo feel to the album. The synthesizer and Rhodes weave in and out throughout and it is like almost two players having a conversation. So I assume he recorded one or the other first and then improvised over it um, using multi-track recording. And a lot of these Japanese ambient music albums came out in an economic bubble in the 80s and 90s when the arts were funded because of a booming economy in Japan. And like many of his contemporaries, Yoshimura was trained in music, but he also had several other jobs he was a researcher, a writer, and historian, according to the liner notes in Kankyo Ongaku. And Yoshimura describes his influences for this album as follows. Images of the movements of clouds, the shade of a tree in summertime, the sound of rain, the snow in a town, with those rather quiet sound images, I sought to add the tone of ink painting, ink painting to the pieces. In this music, a short refrain is played over and over while it changes its form gradually, just like clouds or waves. I put the fr first fragment of the sound, a seed or a stone as it were, to seek the prime number of the sound. And this focus on everyday objects and background music mixed with um, a little bit of humor and Zen Buddhism was drawn from 19th century French composer Eric Satie and his idea of furniture music. Furniture music would sit in an environment like a chair or couch, and this kind of music had a quiet boom in Japan in the 60s and 70s as musicians around Tokyo were influences were influenced by its simplicity and tongue-in-cheek humor. And of course, Brian Eno was also a fan of this idea and developed it further in the 70s with his ambient work for airports and art installations. In the 90s, it was carried on through various electronic uh, dance artists who got into ambient. Um, Aphex Twin has also carried this idea in the 90s with his selected ambient works, volumes one and two. And in fact, when I search for these albums, on YouTube, the search results are all linked. It shows Brian Eno, Hiroshi Yoshimura, and some of the Japanese artists, as well as Aphex Twins albums, all linked together through the YouTube algorithm. Which brings me to my next point. 
a feature on Australian Broadcasting Corporation discusses how Yoshimura's discography was resurrected on YouTube. They say the resurgence of vintage Japanese music originally began with record collectors using YouTube to circumvent the strict Japanese copyright that has prevented much of the music from appearing on Spotify as well as Apple Music and the other streaming services. This was a couple years back. So YouTube fills a gap in Spotify's collection. Hiroshi, he passed away, but this music isn't on professional channels. This is curating work that amateurs are doing. And the article goes on to talk about how minimal calming music is good for YouTube because a full listen of an hour keeps people on the streaming channel. So the algorithm um, was actually kind of suggesting this to people when they were searching for other things. And because it's so long, it's good for YouTube because they make money based on how long people spend on the channel and they get paid through advertising. Since Japanese ambient is part of a movement focused on integrating music into everyday life, it makes sense that YouTube would bring the music to the forefront again, as Google and the algorithms take hold of every part of modern society the ambient sounds from Japan are returning once again for the modern listener. So the, a lot of this kind of started with um, composers and artists looking to Zen Buddhism as an influence. And then it, it has come full circle in a way because it, it went through the French composer Eric Satie and then to Brian Eno in Europe and then back again to Japan, which is where kind of some of these idea, ideas of everyday objects having um, merit in the art world originally started with, with uh, Buddhism. So check it out. I put the links to Spotify, the Light in the Attic release, and some of the articles about the other artists I mentioned in the description below.